Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Elena and in this video I'm going to tell you about software testing principles. The content of this video. Software testing principles and sample questions. According to ICTQB Foundation level syllabus, there are seven testing principles. The first principle. Testing shows presence of defects. Testers test software to verify that application works according to requirements. But when they run their tests and don't find any defects, it doesn't mean that the software is a bug-free. There is no proof that the application doesn't have any defects. It is mainly because some testing scenarios could be not considered, as there are so many different combinations of inputs, interactions between hardware and software, changes in environment, changes in operation system, and additional parameters which can influence the performance of application. Testing can show that the defects are present, so testers do their best trying to find as many defects as possible. Testing activities reduce the probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software but still there is a chance that they exist. Next principle – exhaustive testing is impossible. Exhaustive testing means to test everything – all preconditions and all combinations of inputs. First, it's not possible, because there are so many that you can't identify all of them and have all possible conditions to test them. Second, testing everything will be costly and time-consuming, so it will not be worth it. Projects have limited time and budget for testing. Testers should apply risk analysis and set priorities in testing. Example. There is a web-based mobile application under test. Can you imagine how many mobile devices exist and how many different operation systems are currently being used? as users can use not only up-to-date software operation system, but some previous versions as well. As it is web-based application, so there are also different browsers. Testers can't test everything, they should consider risk. So they can make a decision, for example, to test on high-priority mobile devices and use last three operation systems. The third principle. Early testing. Testing activities should start as early as possible in software development lifecycle. You ask why? Because it is cheaper to fix a defect if it was discovered in the early stage. Let's analyze this picture. Option 1. This one. Requirements were identified and they are correct. Then the system was designed properly to satisfy the requirements. After that, code was written according to requirements and designed documentation, and it doesn't have any mistakes. So, product works as expected. This option. Then, the second option. The requirements and design documents are correct, but there is a defect in the code. It should be fixed. Developers are fixing the code and it takes, for example, one day. Third option. The requirements are correct. There is a mistake in the design document. So it has to be changed. But nevertheless, the code was written according to requirements and design documents. It should be changed as well. The whole process takes, for example, seven days. Option 4. Mistake was made in requirements. For example, the functionality should be completely different. And all the efforts which were made to design, the, uh, to design and code were useless. In the end, we have a product with wrong functionality. To fix this, it takes 30 days. Let's imagine that testing activities started during the requirements gathering stage. So testers analyzed the requirements and identified a mistake. In this case, all efforts for design and coding were not wasted. 
So it is important that testing activities should start as soon as possible in software development lifecycle. It is cheaper to fix a mistake if it was found during requirement stage than after the code was written. Also, we can analyze situation about finding defects before and after release. If the defect is found after the release, it will cost company more money to fix it. Of course, it depends on the type of defect. Let's imagine crucial issue in banking application. When a user submits a money transfer from account A to account B, the balance of account A decreased, but balance of the account B didn't increase. This is a critical defect. It can cause payment delays, contract breaches and penalties. Thus, bank can face with reputation damage, which can cause a lot of losses. Principle 4. Defect clustering. It means that the biggest amount of defects found in the project was related to some specific functionality. This usually happens because some functionality can be complex and tricky. Constantly changing the code due to issues can lead to other defects. It is like Pareto principle applied in software testing. Approximately 80% of the issues are usually found in 20% of the modules. The task of a tester is to identify such tricky modules and use the, his efforts to test that functionality. The fifth principle was a side paradox. When software is tested using the same set of test cases repeatedly, chance that new defects will be found is very small. To memorize the meaning of this principle, you can think about pesticides. When a plant was processed by some particular type of pesticides, after some time it will develop resistance to it. So, to have an effect, farmers have to use different types of pesticides. In testing activities, testers should select different test scenarios, change test cases. Test sets for regression testing should be revised from time to time to make testing more effective. The fixed principle – testing is context-dependent. There is a difference in testing an online store and a complex banking application. Banking applications should be tested more precisely. Mistakes in banking software can cause enormous harm to the bank, business and economy. Also, banking application is safety-critical software. It should be no chance that somebody got access to other people's accounts. The seventh principle – absence of error fallacy. Let's assume that a client requested to develop a mobile application. Let it be an alarm. The requirements were prepared, application was well designed, the code was written and application was tested by software testers. Software worked perfectly according to the requirements. The problem was that nobody needed this application. Users didn't have a need to use it because each phone had its own alarm. So, even if software is error-free, it doesn't mean that it is correct. Sample questions. Which of the following statements best describes one of the seven key principles of software testing? By using automated testing, it is possible to test everything. It's not true and it's not a principle of software testing. With sufficient effort and tool support, exhaustive testing is feasible for all software. It's not true, exhaustive testing is impossible. It is normally impossible to test all input-output combinations for a software system. Yeah, this is true, it is about principle that uh, exhaustive testing is impossible. The purpose of testing is to demonstrate the absence of defects. It's not true, because the first principle of testing is that testing shows presence of defects. So, the correct answer is C. It is normally impossible to test all input-output combinations for a software system. Next question. Select a software testing principle. Lately testing. There is no such principle. Defect paradox. No. 
absence of error fallacy, there is such a principle, and defect identification. So C, it is a software testing principle because other ones are wrong. The third question. When should testing activities start in the software development lifecycle? Select the best answer. After the code was written, before the code was written, as early as possible, before the application was released. So it can be several correct answers, but we should select the best answer. So here, before code was written, it is actually correct answer. Also, before the application was released, it also correct answer. But the best answer is as early as possible, and we should select the best answer, so C. As early as possible. Fourth question. Test leader told a tester to replace existing test scenarios for regression testing suit with a new ones. Tester didn't understand what was the point of revising current test cases as they were up to date according to requirements. What principle should tester consider? Testing is content dependent. Testing shows presence of defects, absence of error fallacy, and pesticide paradox. So it is D, pesticide paradox, because as we know that Tests should be revised time to time, from time to time, because uh, when we use the same test cases, the chance that new defects will be found is very small. So, pesticide paradox. Fifth question. Consider the following statements about the cost of fault. The cost of fixing a fault does not depend on the time when it was found, early in the development phase or later. It's not true. The most expensive to fix faults which were found in the latest development phases. Yeah, this is true. The least expensive to fix faults which were found in the earliest development phases. Yeah, this, this is also true. Faults found after the release are the most expensive to fix. Uh, this is true as well. So, second, third and fourth statements are true and the answer is D. Thank you for watching. You can find ICQB tutorials on my channel. If you are interested in software testing related videos, please subscribe. See you in my next videos.